world today on behalf of Brother Norval. Can we, can you fix that so I can just talk yeah. to it right there without yeah. opening it? Thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 49 years ago, this man, this man took time for me. I was 24 years old and I'm telling you I was in trouble, but I heard him say, I don't have bad days. I don't have any bad days and I was having a lot of bad days, but he took time for me. And in that meet, first meeting him, he said he helped me figure out a lady that was playing the violin for the San Antonio Symphony. He helped me figure out that I could take that violin and use it for ministry. I told him, sometimes people are healed when I play the violin. And so he taught me. Year after year after year, I followed him around. Year after year, I took my five kids to his meetings. Year after year, layers laying hands on the sick with him. Year after year, I can even now, you know, just earlier today, I touched the hand in this casket and I go, that's where that strong gift came from. Through the law of contact and transmission, it came from those hands. The gift of prophecy that is carried in my life. And so many of you, layer after layer for years and years. And then in 2012, seven and a half years ago, a doctor injured me during a surgery. I had to have nine surgeries in less than 90 days. And this man, this man would not let me die. He called me every day. I was really trying to die and he would say, LaDonna, honey, just say, my body's strong, it's not weak. It's strong, it's not weak. Tell me, your body's strong and he wouldn't let me die. Now I'm gonna tell you something, none, we were within 24 hours of picking a hospice out. None of the lifelong issues, the eight things the doctor said would stick on me, stuck. I am stronger ever, ever, ever without medication than I've ever been in my life. Praise God. Now here, before I play my violin, uh, and Jesus always just manifests with the gifts of healing and working of miracles. He won't do anything different today. If, if there, how could there be anything wrong with anybody left after all of this? But if there is, if there is, you know what? If there's one stubborn something here, you watch Jesus just take it away. Now, I want to tell you one thing here now. So many things that we've said, but in two and a half weeks, I will take all these layers with me to a private meeting of 500 men. They've, been, they've had private invitations. These men are all spirit-filled, or 90% at least, spirit-filled men. The conference is closed. They are the cardinals, the bishops, the monsignors, and the priests of the charismatic section of the Catholic Church. And um, I've been asked to speak to them and teach them of healing for one hour. We will go to dinner and come back and I've been asked with no limits, no limitations to have a healing service with these men. Thanks, Brother Norval, for taking time. Thank you. Thank you for taking time. I exalt thee, I exalt thee.
Thank you, Jesus, <clears throat> for our last speaker tonight. Sister Elaine Homer has been Mabel and I's pastor, along with Ken. We've been in tents of 110 degrees at midnight. We've seen miraculous miracles, miraculous deliverances. And I'm hoping very shortly that New Life Bible Church and Norway's Ministries will have raised up a tent, and I hope to have her back in it. So if you would, welcome Sister Elaine Homer to the podium. Hallelujah. The one thing that Brother Norville gave me for 31 years, I traveled with him all over the country, Hawaii, and I've been a missionary to Russia and South America and Africa. He'd done a lot of things for me. My tent blew down. I was so proud of it, being a Pentecostal girl. My dad had little ragged tents all my life. And I would uh, sing in those tents. But one day, Brother Norval came to me and he said, uh, Elaine, your tent just blew, blew down, didn't it? And I said, yes, sir. He said, okay, I'm just going to pray for you. And I said, please do, Brother Norval. I love that tent so much. It reminded me of my mom and dad. Because when I met Brother Norval, I was Pentecostal girl with my hair down below my hips. No makeup, no jewelry, no nothing. Long dress. And the Pentecostal people, when I went with Brother Norval, thought I was going with Charismatics. So they all dropped me and wouldn't let me preach, wouldn't let me sing. And then the Charismatic people, because I had no makeup on and long hair and long dresses and didn't wear pants and things like that. Well, they wouldn't have me. So Brother Norval took me. And he taught me how to cast out devils. He taught me one day, he said, Elaine, now this is the way you do it. Are you listening to me? I said, yes, Brother Norval, I hear you. I love you. I honor you. You're my father. With Zona and Lee and Bobby and Terry and everybody, just my family. He said, now, Lester Summerall and I, we went to eat one day. Now, he said, are you listening to this? I said, yes, sir. He said, one day, Lester and I went to eat. It was a real nice restaurant. And he said, as the waitress came up to our table and said, my name is Carrie, and I'm going to serve you. He said, the Holy Ghost jumped in my belly. And he said, I knew she was demon possessed. I said, you did? He said, yes. I said, what did you do? He said, the Lord told me not to be ashamed of him. He said, don't you ever be ashamed of the Lord, Elaine. No matter what God tells you to do, you do it. And he said, if you won't be ashamed of him, he'll perform signs and wonders and miracles for you. He said, so I got up and I laid my hands on her. And he said, remember, when you talk to the devil, you don't act nice. You have to talk with authority. So I said, well, how did you do it, Brother Norval? He said, I said, come out of her in the name of Jesus. I said, in the middle of the restaurant with Lester Summerall? He said, yes. He said, she fell out. She rolled under the table. I got up out of my chair and I crawled under the table too. And he said, for 30 minutes, I just kept on saying, come out of her, you foul spirit. Let her go in Jesus' name. He said, finally, the devil all came out. She crawled out from under the table. I crawled out from under the table, sit down and fixed my coat and my shirt. And I looked at Brother Lester and I said, I'm sorry if I embarrassed you, sir. I said, what did he say? He said, well, Brother Norval, if you hadn't have done it, I would. I felt the same thing when she came up. So I said, Brother Norval, let me ask you some questions. When you write a, wrote a book, How to Make the Devil Leave You Alone, I said, do you believe that there's devils everywhere? He said, no, I believe there's two everywhere. 
So the next night, now for about eight or nine times a year, Brother Norval and I would do these conventions. They were fabulous conventions everywhere. Everybody spoke. That's Brother Copeland, Marilyn Hickey, Benny Hinn, anybody you can name would come and speak with us at these conventions. And we would sit there. I would do the morning service. And then Dave Roberson would do the afternoon service. Brother Norval would do the night when the guests weren't there. And then Brother Norval would say, now you're going to sing for me tonight and pray for the sick. So that means I would just preach all day. I mean, you know, and, and then I'd sit there till one o'clock in the morning. And so one night this lady came in and I'm going to be short because you guys do know that all y'all had five minutes and you all took 30. <laughs> and I have 20, I looked over here, I said, now, Brother Norval made me promise I'd preach his funeral. He even wrote it in paper and said, Elaine's going to preach my funeral. I have 30 minutes, so what is the equivalent of you all having five and taking 30 and I have 30? How much, anybody, my husband, can you add your mathematician? How much time do I have? No prayer lines, no offerings. Okay. So... This lady, I'm just going to tell one story, I promise. And I know you're getting tired because your back ends are tired. That's where most of your brains are when you sit in services. Just kidding. So this lady comes in, and Brother Norval and I are sitting on the front. And uh, I watched her as she came in. It was in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And she was twisted, absolutely twisted with a crippling disease. Her knees was like this, and she was walking, trying to get down to a seat. One of the ushers went to help her, and she walked real slow all the way down the aisle, set her on the front row. And Brother Norville leaned over to me and said, Elaine, come with me. I'm going to teach you something. I said, yes, sir. So I hopped up, ran down to the front with him. And there the little woman was, sitting in her little chair, just all crippled up. He said, honey, do you believe that the devil is going to leave you and that I know how to make the devil leave you alone? She said, yes, sir. He said, then go from her, you foul devil. In Jesus' name. And all of a sudden, you could hear bones popping. She began to move. Her legs straightened out and she got up and danced all over that church. I mean, that convention center. And everybody was shouting and dancing because of the miraculous of God. Now we walked back on the platform and he said, did you learn anything? I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've got it. So the next night, this lady was healed. She was over here jumping up and down and screaming and it was awesome. But this side of the convention center, a lady started down the aisle. And so help me, I lie not. And there's plenty of film to prove it because it's on video. There's a lady started down the aisle. She was twisted, just like the other one, walking like this. And when she got down to the front to sit down, Brother Norville said, Now tonight's your night, so you go down there and do this one. I said, Brother Norville. He said, no, I told you what to do last night. He said, now Elaine, God is going to take you around the world preaching Jesus. He said, and you are going to go into places that people are so demonized. He said, now get up and get down there and get that woman delivered. Well, I prayed for headaches. And you know, I prayed for little simple things back in those days. But since then, God's raised three people from the dead. And, and, and miracles so great that I've just finished a book called My Eyes Have Seen the Glory and Brother Norval Hayes wrote the foreword to it and, and he said now get on down there and do what I told you to do. I said yes sir and I went down there and I just stood in front of her and I said go from her you foul devil in Jesus name and to my wonderful surprise bones begin to pop it wasn't my faith I was scared but I was doing when you're up here talking about how this anointing is transferred and this anointing is not going to leave the earth, you are looking at one person that loves that man with all my heart. I went everywhere. He didn't have to give me any money. He didn't have to recognize me. But you know what the greatest thing he gave me? He gave me you. I look over there and I see Ronnie and Kathy Pittman 
from North Carolina. I look over here and I see Alan and Terry Crider. I look all over this room and I see your churches that I preached in. The greatest gift, he gave me a platform and he gave me a door because God had already given me the anointing from my mother's womb. And now he told me how to cast out devils and raise the dead. So when I say great is the faithfulness of God, I'm not going to keep you any longer, but I do have the time. <laughs> and I can open my Bible and take the word of God and preach, preach, preach. But if it hadn't been for Brother Norval, I would have never got to be in front of Rod Parsley talking. I would have never got to be in all. There's Brother Huffman and Linda all the way from Roswell, Georgia. All you people. And my wonderful husband from Canada. He's the reason I married him 40 years ago. Because I went to Brother Norval's meeting and I met Ken. And Brother Norval said, that's not fair. You came to see me. I said, no, I didn't. I came and God gave me Ken. Isn't that great? He said, I guess. <laughs> I love him. I love Zona. Remember her going away service? I was preaching and, and Brother Norval took the microphone and, and the lights went off and we had no power and we had to go put little zone in the ground after pitch dark. You remember that? But we're not going to do that today. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to have mercy on you, okay? All of you guys took all the time. But I love you and I forgive you. You just have to take it up with Brother Norval. He asked me to preach his funeral, but can't do it. My husband's tired, wore out, and hungry. So I guess I better let you guys go. Before I go, I'm going to sing Norval a little song, though, if you don't mind. Do you mind? Just a little song for Brother Norval. Because of who you are, I give you glory. <laughs> yes. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are again. you're not here. Remember you told me when you went to heaven, Brother Norval, that there was portals of glory. And you said on those portals of glory, 
that sometime a cloud of witnesses gathers. You saw that when you went to heaven, the portals of glory. So I hope and pray right now that you're on the portals of glory today. And let me tell you, I worship Jesus. I worship Jesus. Brother Norfolk. I love you, Lee. I love you for everything you taught me. Thank you for buying my new tent. You just wrote out a $10,000 check and said, here, go buy it. And I did. And it's been full packed to the gills. People with new hearts, 12 insane people from a uh, insane, uh, insane or a, 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 a hospital they loaded him up and brought him brother normal and every one of them was delivered because you taught me how to cast out devils thank you and I honor each and every one of you all of you dear preachers ministers, pastors, evangelists Pastor Keith every one of you, I love you may God richly bless you